Ooh, I'm giving straight up witchy vibes. Ooh, yes. I'm ready. Let's go. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Tonight, we are going to talk a little bit about a video that I wanted to do when we were in New Orleans and I didn't get to do it and I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about why I didn't get to do it. So the I wanted to do a story on Addie and Zach which were this couple that lived in New Orleans that they were bartenders. Addie didn't like Zach when she first met him. She was like no he is he's annoying he he I don't like him no she was she wanted nothing to do with Zach when she met him so he kept on like kind of flirting with her and and would talk to her every time um that they worked her bar was on one side of the street and his bar was on the other side of the street but you know they would kind of go back and forth between bars and he always tried to flirt with Addie. So finally she gives in to his persistent like flirting and they kind of start hanging out and Addie actually falls in love with Zach. He was like this carefree kind of guy. He, he, he was just different. He was something that she had never been around or had the kind of person that she had never met before, I guess. So they fall in love and then Katrina happens. So while everybody else was trying to evacuate the city, they were like, we're not going nowhere. We're going to stay. This is our city. So they decided to stay and ride out Katrina in New Orleans. Everything was pretty good. I guess the part of town where they were at didn't flood as bad. So it was kind of like the neighborhood kind of banded together. They grilled out. They drank a whole, whole lot, like a whole lot. And they just had like this bond and it was, it, they felt like the superheroes of New Orleans, I guess. So they rode the storm out. Their relationship continues to blossom. Then Addie finds out that Zach has been kind of cheating on her. He's been having some relationships with other people but that's not something that I'm going to go into. But he had actually cheated on Addie. So when she finds this out, it's crazy because they had already signed on for this lease or signed a lease for this apartment that is now the, the voodoo shop. Where it was a voodoo temple at the time, but now it's a voodoo shop and museum. So they had already signed this lease. Well, then Addie goes to the owner of the property and was like, look, I don't want him on this lease. I don't want him to live, live here. And the, the, the guy that owned the property was like, look, y'all need to work that out. I, I have nothing to do with that. That's between y'all. So Addie lets, I guess, him come in and one thing leads to another. And Zach actually strangles her to death. And then he goes on a bender for like two weeks. He spends all of his money. But at some point in time, I've heard numerous stories. He comes back to the apartment and is like, I got to do something with, with her body. He had already dropped the temp in the apartment really low so that it wouldn't start smelling and stuff. But he was like sleeping beside her body at night time. It's weird. And he left, a, he left a diary. He wrote in this diary. So we kind of know everything that happened during that period of time. But so he, ha, he realizes he has to get rid of the body. So he cuts her into pieces. He puts part of her in the oven and part of her on the stovetop. So then he, at some point in time, writes a letter, puts it in a bag with his dog tags, and he goes to a hotel and... The bartender thought that it was a little suspicious because he was acting kind of weird, but he thought that Zach was going to run out on his tab. He didn't know exactly what Zach was going to do. So Zach is like kind of pacing back and forth. And this guy's like, oh, he's going to run out on his bar tab. He's going to run out on his bar tab. But he doesn't. Instead, Zach leaps. For, I think it's the fifth story. He le leaps 
from the bar area, the rooftop part, onto a parking deck below, and he dies instantly. So the police are called. They, you know, are searching for his identity or his identification. They find a Ziploc bag in his front pocket with a, with a note and his dog tags in the note says, you know, go to my house. It gives the address. The police go there. They actually have to wake up the owner of the property to let them in. And then when they go into the apartment, there's things written in spray paint all over the walls. And then they, there's the diary there that kind of tells everything that Zach has done over the last few weeks. And then they go in and they discover the, the body parts that are inside the oven and on top of the stove. So skip ahead to modern day time. So I have heard this story, it's, it's a love story that went way wrong. And so I wanted to really cover this story on my channel. And when we were in New Orleans, I was like, this is a perfect place to go because it has such crazy history with these two. Because the, nobody, nobody can deny that they loved each other. I mean, that was a very well-known thing that they, that they loved each other deeply. They just had issues. You know, he had, he was in the war and he was struggling with his issues she had issues too and took medication. Sometimes she'd take her medication, sometimes she wouldn't. So it was just, it was, it was a whirlwind of when this was gonna happen pretty much. So we go to New Orleans, uh, we tracked across, across town. We walked forever to get over to this, the museum. So we get there, it's right at closing time. And I go on in. Bloody Mary is actually there and she's like running the register. She's helping some customers and she was like, Hey, look around. Let me know if you need, need anything. And I was like, okay, thank you. So I kind of wait, wait around for the customers to kind of go. Cause I told her, I said, I would like to talk to you. And she was like, okay, well let me get, you know, get these customers out and then we can talk. So I said, okay. I sent her in, I'll wait for everybody to leave. And then I told her, I said, look, I'm doing like a whole series of haunted places and, and things like that in New Orleans. I said, I would really love to do a story on Addie and Zach's apartment. I said, you can tell the story of them however you want the story betrayed, you know, what angle you want to do it. Because she was very iffy about that. She was oddly very it seemed very protective of their story i guess she she doesn't want certain angles of the story told that's what i will say so i told her i said you can tell the story however you want to tell it and that's how we will go i don't want to push any kind of viewpoint of the story and it seemed to me like she she got my phone number and she was like, I'm going to be really busy the next few days. And she was naming off everything that she had to do. Her air conditioners had went out at her home or something. I understand there's a lot of stuff going on. And then she, she kind of told me like, hey, another, another production company had just left. They had just done a story on the apartment. And she was like, how much, how much money do you have? And I was like, well, I mean, because my channel is not monetized. So any money on any makeup, anything, it comes out of my pocket. You know, I, I don't make any money on my YouTube channel yet. So I was like, well, I don't really have a whole lot of money that I can, I don't have a budget really, you know? And she was like, well, how many subscribers does your channel have? And I, you know, I told her a little bit over 2000 and she was like, uh, you know, she, I don't feel like she was too impressed with my numbers, you know what I mean? But, so, I think, I think that it was, I think that we couldn't do the story and she didn't give us access to the apartment because, number one, she's very iffy about how the story of them is portrayed to the public. And I think another reason is because I didn't have the money to pay her. I feel like that is her bread and butter there, that museum and, and doing the tours and stuff and letting people go up to 
their apartment. I feel like that is her bread and butter. And I, I completely understand that. But my thing is like, if you're, if you own a business and I'm sorry, this I'll ask you to drive me crazy. If you own a business, I feel like you would want more publicity because the more publicity you get out there about something, it's going to draw people in, you know? So I thought, well, if I had a business and it was based on tourism, I would definitely want people to to do stories on me or YouTube channels, you know, on my place of business because that would draw in people. It would draw in visitors, you know, and they want to come and see it. But she never called me. It might have been because I wasn't willing to pay her like a whole bunch of money or whatever because she kept saying like, how much money do you have? Well, this other crew that just filmed, they, they rented the whole space out for the night, you know? So I felt like it was very like money driven and I just was not going to pay a whole lot of money to, to go up there. I mean, I just wasn't because like I said, my channel doesn't make money. So I wasn't fixing to spend a whole, a, and I'm going to guess that like she charges like a lot to do, to let you up there and film because she will not let anybody film up there unless you rent out the space and you know and she pretty much holds that for tv programs and that kind of stuff so i i really do think that it was all about money and that's the reason why i didn't get to go up there and and film in the apartment for you guys but i don't want you guys to think that i just didn't try to to go and do that we went there i talked to her i gave her my phone number i really tried to get us to be able to go up there and see the apartment. There's a lot of people that don't like what she does there because she, they feel like she's kind of exploiting the deaths of these two. You know, that's not for me to judge really. I do feel like she, she is, it's a money thing for her though, to be honest. I think that she knows that there are people that are intrigued by it like TV companies and that kind of stuff that will be willing to pay a lot of money to get up there. I just thought it was crazy because yes, I am a small channel. I don't have a lot of followers, but it would still be, it would still be an outlet for her message and for her business to get out there. But you know, I don't know if the apartment is haunted. I don't know if there's demons in it. I don't know any of these things that are supposed to be in there you know she supposedly is working with the spirits and still continues to work with the spirits to help them to heal and move on you know i don't know how i feel about that to be honest with you i i don't know um but that is the reason why we did not get to do the video for the channel if you guys want to find out more about zach and addy their story is really a good story except for when it comes to the end they really loved each other they they went through a lot uh, for each other and with each other. So it's a very good love story. It just has a really bad ending to it. But yeah. Um, thank you guys for tuning into my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.